I got a very nice question on my video on the flexor carpi ulnaris that I'd like to read and answer as a video because it's really super interesting. Sorry, I can't call you by name, man, because, well, it's your nickname on the, uh, on the user. But the question is, I do high-intensity jump, uh, jump rope workouts and started feeling pain in my left wrist. I rested for about two months and have now started again. Didn't have any problems in the first few days, but felt pain halfway through today's workout. Do you have any tips or recommendations? Well, this is a great example of the way we think about all this. Look, the way you have to see this type of pain is you have to see it as cumulative pain, i.e. the glass that gets full. You see the glass here has, say, three things. It has a tap, it's what you do with your wrist it, or with your flexor carpi ulnaris. It has a straw, that's how you relax the region. And it has a size which is its capacity, what the WHO, World Health Organization, calls um, load-bearing capacity. Now, coming to your question, the steps we will reason through are one, close the tap, two, better straw, three, better capacity. Okay? Tap-wise, what you have to understand is that the tap regarding the flexor carpi is not only the jump rope workouts, it's all your life. So for example, and this is not in your question, if you're a manual worker and you spend your day uh, turning uh, with a screwdriver by hand, well, the, the, the remaining capacity, say, on your, on your wrist is smaller than if you have another job, meaning that there are more taps which are open. So tip number one is look at all your other daily life activities which strain the wrist. Now let's zoom on the tap regarding fitness. Uh, one of the question is, is the answer not in the question? When you say high intensity jump rope workouts, well, isn't it too high intensity? Maybe not for everybody, but maybe for you or maybe for you at the moment. That would be question one. Question two would be, well, are you sure that your movement is right? What I mean with that is that, you know, you have, say, if you look at different people who do uh, that type of workouts, you will see some who move the wrists a lot and some who move much more with the elbow and the shoulder. That is one difference of what happens in the wrist. The other difference will be how strong you hold the grip of the jump rope, which will be dependent on two things, three things. One thing, the diameter of the handle. The smaller the diameter, the, the, the less uh, comfortable it will be. So there, one trick would be, well, try to put a tennis grip around the handle of your jump rope to see if by increasing the, the diameter a bit, you can reduce the strain in the, in the forearm. Idea number two is, well, maybe you grip too strong because the thing is slippery, especially when you sweat, you know. So again, the tennis grip or some other, say, cover, could help that. You can also try, you know, the, um, uh, when you do a mountain bike, you have some handles uh, for the steering, which are kind of foam-like things, which could be quite comfortable in your, on your jump rope. And idea number three is you hold too tight because you hold too tight, you know, because you're too tense on your jump rope. So how strong you grip is one parameter of the tap. The other parameter of the tap is to which extent do you move the wrist, you see? How far are you from the end of the range of motion, i.e. is your movement purely in the wrist or do you distribute the movement throughout the three joints? And this is where you need someone who really knows a lot about um, jump ropes and say these type of exercises to look at the, at the, at the technique that you use and advise you on how you spread the load between the joints. And the third parameter of the tap is the duration. This is where I was on um, high intensity, isn't it too intense? Okay, so you need to look at basically the, the range of motion, 
the tension during the, uh, the, the motion and the duration of the exercise. That would be regarding part one, which is close the tap. Now regarding part two, which is empty the straw. Empty the straw is, for example, the, the stretch that I have shown in the, in the video on the flexor carpi ulnaris. But it could also be a heat pack, it could be anything you want. Regarding the straw, you have to bear in mind that frequency is much more important than, um, than duration, i.e. you need to relax slash stretch these muscles very, very often, not only at the end of your workout. So my advice would be, and maybe it's not permanent, maybe it's just during the recovery phase or so, that you go only five times and you stretch for 30 seconds and you go only five times and you stretch for 30 seconds. And when you do the only five times, you focus on the things that we discussed, how strong you grip. Yeah? So you need to, to, to relax much more often and, um, and that can include stretch, that can include also what I have shown in the relaxation exercises, which are shaking the wrists in one direction or in the other direction. Okay, so much more frequent uh, resting periods, both during the workout and after the workout. Then step number three is we look at the size of the glass and we wonder, well, is the glass not too small for the straw and for the tap? Um, especially for the tap, actually. There, the, I am a bit... Uh, say buggered by the fact that you say you had pain two months ago. You know, some types of pain, I mean especially tendon pain, uh, takes really long to recover, uh, up to a year, a year and a half. Therefore, the question is, right now, is the capacity of your wrist not just lower than what you ask from your wrist, you know? It could be that you're a bit quick in restarting the workout. So, you know, the idea would be, well, if you want to respect the capacity of your wrist, you need to flirt with the limit, but flirt from below, i.e. you should never reach the limit. If you cross the limit of what your wrist can do, you're going to create pain, and that pain is going to, you know, bring you into a vicious cycle. Uh, where in which your, your brains will be thinking, uh -huh, this is a dangerous thing, so I need to hold tighter because I'm contracted, I'm scared, etc. And that will just make things worse. So you need to re-educate your brains and your movement in a, in a safe way. And that safe way is you do less than the limit, you rest. You try a bit more, you rest. So say, for example, if yesterday you tried three series of 10, well, today, I would try just two series of five, and I would keep this for a week. If in a week you never have pain, then you can try three series of five. That, again, you do for a week. If after a week you don't feel anything, then you can go to three series of six. Yeah? Six, not ten. If uh, when you do the three series of five, you start feeling something, you go down back to two series of five and you stay there for two, three weeks. Yeah? And after two, three weeks, we do the test again. And during the two, three weeks, you focus on quality of the movement, on being loose, on spreading the load, etc., etc., etc. See what I mean? So it's, it's really difficult, uh, especially when you're in a fitness mood and you're really trying to, to, to work out, well, if you want to work out for a long time, on the short term, you need to be extremely respectful of the limit because violating the limit is not going to push it upwards. It's not going to work like this. So you need to really go slow, take it easy, relax very often and focus much more on quality than on quantity until you're in, back in full control of your health. I hope this helps. Well, subscribe to, uh, to, the, to the channel and feel free to ask any question. It's really excellent for me to have ideas of your questions and concerns because I can answer by video and that way we help everybody. So thanks a lot.